Today, we want to demonstrate some important ideas about critical thinking. I'm concerned about some things I read in newspapers and books, things I hear in school. To begin, I might mention that there are times when every person has to exercise his judgment. Watching television or films and listening to teachers and friends. A person should try to be sure about the facts of a given situation. The facts. We have to keep them straight. It's easy to keep the facts straight, especially when a person is actually on the spot and sees things for himself. Yesterday, for instance, I met you on the street. We walked together, and then you went into the fine arts building for your painting class. Those are facts. The facts, based on his own observations. But that's not all fact. I wasn't going to class. I had to get a sweater out of my locker. I left it there last Thursday. Apparently, he didn't know all the facts. I know your class is there, so I assume that was what you were going there for. There was a sudden break in what he saw for himself. He ran out of facts and filled the gap with an assumption that turned out not to be fact. But my mistake really didn't matter too much. It was unimportant. This time, but it could have been important. What do you mean? Well, for instance, reading a news story about something that's happened. Or watching a television news program. There was an incident on the streets a few days ago. Some trouble between political demonstrators and the police. We weren't there. We didn't actually see it. What were the facts? Watching television or reading a book magazine or newspaper how do you really know what the facts are first you have to have some notion of what a fact is a definition of a fact a fact is a thing done a deed that which has existence the quality of being actual that trouble on the streets was actual it existed but what really happened what were the facts of the situation we saw them on television. Television can't show everything, and the newscaster's description, it might or it might not have been fact. Police estimated damage at $50,000. Injured in the confrontation were Mrs. Frank Eines, 30, and her brother-in-law, Daniel Eines, 19. They were leaders of a party of militants that moved down Central Street and into the area. Yes, Robert but there was an eyewitness account, too. In the riot described the incident. I could see a lot of rocks and clubs. I thought I'd just better get out of there. So I abandoned the car, and I started running. And the police were there at the corner, and I looked back at the car. An eyewitness is a primary source of information. He was there. But an eyewitness account may or may not be factual. It depends on the witness himself, his skills as an observer. Did he actually see what he described, or did excitement or prejudice color his description? That was what we saw on television. We've read about what happened in newspapers, too. Were the stories first-hand reports, or did the reporters get their information second-hand from witnesses? Anything other than an eyewitness account is a secondary source of information. So we weren't on the scene ourselves, but we learned about it through statements made by newspaper writers, a television newsman, even the cameraman. The place where he stood, the angles he shot, his personal idea of what was important. They all must have colored his visual statement. We depend on visual and verbal statements for most of our facts. Here's a verbal statement from the courier. Two bystanders were injured in the foray. Mrs. Frank Ives, 30, and Daniel Ives, 19. But the Gazette says that three demonstrators were injured. Mrs. Frank Ives, 30. Look how the name is different from paper to paper. Daniel Ives, 19, and Marilyn Phillips born 25. Different statements from different papers. Statements of fact may be assumptions that contradict each other. 
How do we find out which statements are really facts? It's hard to be sure, but one way is to check the sources. The courier assumed that the people were bystanders and their name was Ives. The Gazette assumed the people were demonstrators named Eines, and so did the television newsman. Injured in the confrontation were Mrs. Frank Eines, 30, and her brother-in-law, Daniel Eines, 19. They were leaders of a party of militants that moved down... Two out of three seems to make the name Eines in the role of demonstrator facts. But the TV news said two people were hurt, and so did the courier. The Gazette is the only one that said three were injured. It's still two out of three, but different sources agree on different facts. Often two or three sources are not enough. The facts become evident only after a number of sources have been consulted or a number of observations have been made. We were just talking about that kind of thing in biology, about radiation. Did you know that scientists have found that radiation causes mutations? Hereditary mutations in living things. They worked with animals and plants and exposed them to radiation. Later on, they mated the specimens. And they found that a lot of the offspring were mutants. They did the experiment again and again with different animals and plants and they kept finding a high percentage of mutants. In people, too. The scientists studied Japanese families exposed to radiation from atomic bombs. They found out that a lot of children born after the bombing were mutants. Now, there have been so many observations that it's accepted as fact. Radiation causes hereditary mutations. A statement of fact that checks out after repeated observations is reliable. It has reliability. In social science, we talked about another way of checking statements. You make sure the statement refers to what it's supposed to be referring to. Like something I heard in a restaurant last week. The river is full of filth and garbage. I don't care how well they treat it, the water tastes like it's polluted. It may be a fact that the water tastes bad, but that earlier statement about the water being full of filth and garbage was probably an assumption it couldn't be checked simply by tasting the water. When several statements appear together and we know one is valid, we should not assume the others are valid too. I guess this all means that we have to be careful about checking the sources of information. If the source is a person, you can question him. A friend of mine demonstrated magnetism at a science fair. And I asked him, what will a magnet attract? It doesn't attract copper or glass or zinc, or wood. In fact, magnets attract only iron and steel and a few less common metals. Now, here is a very powerful magnet. Watch this steel ball closely as I place it near the magnet. The magnet attracts a ball from a distance. We say... The, the subject was science. My friend is a pretty good scientist. His statement was probably fact. It's important to examine the competence of the source. Even if your source is a book or an article, you can check it out. It says here in this article that the atmosphere of Mars is about 7 tenths of 1% oxygen. The writer doesn't ask you to take his word for it. He says the figures have been released by NASA and by the Space Agency of the USSR. The same figures from both agencies. And who else in the world has the skills and know-how to get the facts straight? It's important to assess the skills and knowledge of the source. But what if something important has happened and no one with those skills was there? Or if the people with the skills were looking the other way? Or if it happened so fast it was hard to see exactly what went on? The truth of the matter is that a statement of fact is simply a statement of probability. What if a new discovery comes up? and it changes statements that people have believed to be true for years, or even centuries. We are continually making observations that make former statements of fact invalid. What if something has existed for years or centuries and no one has ever known about it? Because the Earth is constantly changing, because the universe is changing, facts themselves are changing. That's why a person who effectively exercises critical judgment tries to keep abreast of the facts.